Hey everybody, it's Eli! And today isn't a summon video, nor is it a gameplay video, but as you can tell from the title, I'm actually going to be talking about my top 5 waifus in Dragalia Lost. Now, to kind of preface this, um, I'm only limiting it to 5 because I don't want to talk for a very long time and I'm sure you guys don't want to listen to me for a very long time because I ramble. And secondly, uh, these are not going to be from a meta standpoint. Um, I'm not going to talk about their gameplay or the skills or even <clears throat> or like even whether they're good for end game content or not. This is purely from either a uh, visual aesthetic point of view or from uh, their character point of view, if that makes any sense. But yes, for the most part, that's what I'm going to be talking about. Yes. And I'll be counting down because uh, number one is kind of a weird one. Um, and yeah, I'll go into that when I get there, basically. Okay. <laughs> so, we'll start off with number five, <clears throat> which is Alphemia. Now, Alphemia is very... Like, her thing is like a timid researcher, and part of why I like Althemia is because she, she's very shy, firstly, and <laughs> she doesn't, she has a hard time kind of like articulating things in words, which 100% I relate, <laughs> but she's very passionate about what she does, and she... You can tell that she tries really hard to talk about things, and um, but she knows what she's talking about, that's another thing, because she's so passionate about it, but you know, because she's shy, she struggles, and I kind of relate to that a lot, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like I'm also a little bit biased when it comes to Althemia, because she is also my boyfriend's favorite character. And uh, the, the words that he uses to describe her is shy and passionate, which I kind of understand. I kind of understand his reasoning why he likes Alphemia, but I'm personally a little bit embarrassed to say why, because it's kind of cheesy. But I under but I understand kind of just going through this process of like understanding Alphemia's character in my head for this video, I kind of get it. But yeah, she's super cute. <laughs> like if you look at her, she's very cute. And did you guys see her Halloween alt? Because that's also very cute. And I love it. I, I love her whole visual aesthetic too. But yeah, her <laughs> But yeah, her whole like shy and like passionate thing, I can understand why it's really it why it's appealing and it's adorable. Ha! So that's number five. <laughs> Anyway, number four, we have Siren. Now, Siren, as you guys know, she is like the, she she was like the main character, quote unquote, like character in the, uh, the summer events part one and two from last year. And uh, so why I like Siren is um, partially because of that event. I feel like a lot of people like Siren because of that event because we learned a lot about her and what her character is like. Now she's someone who really loves singing, we know that because her name's Siren, and she's she went through a lot of problems basically because she has the singing ability, and by singing ability she just sings really really well, but she loves singing so much, but she feels like this kind of sadness and loneliness because people for whatever reason have this misconception that she's a monster when really she's just someone who genuinely loves singing. And the misconceptions that they have of her are completely untrue. But she's able to overcome that and she's able to like pursue this passion of singing that she really, really loves. And um, there's something about it that's like just genuinely quite admirable because of how much she, you know, she's, she's very positive a lot of the time. I mean, not always because you see in the the story, if you guys remember, she has moments where she, she's kind of like, she's unsure, she's lonely, like she's sad, she's lonely, she, you know, she, she feels hurt still by how people treat her, but, you know, she's trying her best to like put her, her voice out there because that's what she genuinely loves, uh, <laughs> which, you know, that, that's kind of pretty much why I like Siren, you know, she, 
she does what she does and she loves and she loves it. She has like such a pure joy on her face and I think it's really sweet. Ha! So that's number four. <laughs> number three, we have Rena. Rena is the uh, eldest sister of the blacksmith sisters and she's really, really passionate about <laughs> blacksmithing and weapons that to a point where she can't, almost in a, in a sense like she can't live without her blade like she uses her blade for everything like everything she tries to solve it with her blade to a point that it's quite a, a lot it's kind of much i'll be honest but you know like no matter how much she loves her weapons you know she still really loves her sisters and she takes really good care of her sisters and she even though she has like these opportunities to pursue her own happiness, she puts her sisters in a way first because she she loves her sisters enough that she wants to be there for them, to to see them succeed, to see them like pursue their happiness. Because in a way, like seeing them happy is what makes her happy. And I don't know, there there's something about her that's very um that, that, I, that I find like very genuine and sincere in that kind of way where you know that there's something that she loves very dearly but she's willing to put other people first because that's who she is it's the kind of person that she is uh, and those very similar qualities of like being very caring towards other people can be found in number two who is Verica so Verica is a fortune teller and um, because of her fortune telling, that's how she met the prince and got into the halidom. Now, because she has this this quality of being able to basically like fortune tell, like you know, see see the future in a way, see destiny. She, in some ways, can seem a little bit too caring or a little bit overprotective. But you know, it's also genuinely because um because she really. <laughs> Um, sorry it's because she genuinely like really cares about like about other people and and it's this quality that she has where she uh she's very su supportive from the sidelines and uh even though she has this opportunity to kind of like be in the spotlight because she's very very beautiful um she still considers other people and like their feelings first and it's a quality that's that um that you can that, like i said is very similar in like both eric and rena that they're very um that they're very like reliable because you know that they they ugh, gosh my words you know that they care enough about like the people around them to do what they can and i don't know personally it's a very sweet characteristic So that's number two. Like, number two and three are very similar reasons, so <laughs> it was easy to talk about both of them. But before we get to number one, I thought I'd kind of talk a little bit about some honorable mentions because, you know, they're, they're characters that I also genuinely do like, but um, I don't know, maybe they're in my top 10 if I ever did a top 10, but for now, they'll be my honorable honorable mentions um so first we have Eli eleonora <laughs> if i'm saying it correctly eleonora now eleonora is oh my gosh i don't know how to explain this but um you can see like her description is her like wanting vengeance because she you know she used to be a, a was it a village chief like village leader but her village like her village got massacred and she wants revenge for it but, um, but she's still very, she has like this curiosity and this very, this fascination with human culture and this kind of like, I don't know, there's something about that kind of like gap moe almost, almost like thing that I find like super, super adorable. And like whenever you see like the Dragalia life where she's... <laughs> just like super um super interested and like all starry-eyed for like human things is just so cute i don't know i don't know how to really like 
go into it. It's very, it's just so cute. And I can't, I can't, I can't with my words, okay? Sometimes, sometimes word, words hard. <laughs> sometimes words are very hard. But yeah, she's adorable and I don't have much else to say. <laughs> the next honorable, men honorable mention, haha, is Chelsea. Now, Chelsea, her personality is quite, for me, per it's quite intense just because I'm not, I'm not super like big on like the really obsessive possessive types, like almost borderline yandere. I don't really like yandere's that much. I'm sorry. This is, this is my own personal opinion. Um, it's just not really my thing, but I do like her design. I like that she's pink because pink's my favorite color. But yeah, like for, for Chelsea, it's more of a very visual appealing thing, which is very similar to the next honorable mention, which is Konohana Sakuya, who's very, very pink. <laughs> She's pink and flowery. It's very girly of me to say, but I like those things. And... Yeah, she's she's also just really really pretty. Like like have you seen Konohana Sakya? She's very pretty. Her her summer alt as well that just came out is also really pretty. And I think it's kind of hilarious how big those buns are. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a very visual thing for both Chelsea and Sakuya. Like I just like their um their visual aesthetic. I really dig it. <laughs> now for number one. Okay, I have to say, because some of you might think it's cheating that I have two people in my number one spot. But the thing is, no matter how much you try to make me choose between them, I legitimately can't. Both of them are number one in my book. I can't decide, no matter how much I agonize over it. I like both of them so much. Okay, and I can't, there's just, I, I, I really can't, like, even if you put a character sorter in front of me, they're still both going to take the number one spot. I don't know what to tell you guys. <laughs> but my number one is Sanoa and Mim. <laughs> so I'm gonna go into Sanoa first, okay? Uh, since you guys probably, if you've seen my videos, can kind of guess that I like Sanoa from my reaction. Oh my gosh, what are you, what are you? <gasps> Yay! <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, I'm gonna take a screenshot of that real quick. Oh my gosh, I got her! Oh, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gosh, I got Thank you, Sky Games. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Yay! Oh. I am- oh my god. <laughs> so when I summoned her, and <laughs> her summer alt, when I summoned her summer alt, and also when I made that video of um, a quote-unquote Sinoa solo for uh, Scylla- Scylla? Scylla? I think Scylla expert? Expert, not X. I've tried X. It's very hard. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway. Sinoa is a researcher for specifically time-space magic and what ends up happening is that her research is actually really really ambitious and really really difficult so every time she experiments to achieve time-space magic aka a wormhole um, it explodes and that's what she ends up being known for in 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 the game is that she makes things explode a lot with her experiments because she's failing a lot but the thing with Sanoa is that no matter how often she fails time and time again and that is a lot because she's known for exploding things in the Halidom she always gets back up and she continues her experiments over and over again with the same amount of enthusiasm as like you know the the previous time she failed like, she's always so passionate about her research, and even though that she does feel down sometimes, because, like, you know, when you fail all almost all the time, it's really, really difficult to keep up the morale, you know? Like, nobody likes failing, but it's very admirable to me that is the kind of person who just doesn't stop. Like, she has the tenacity and... You know the passion for her research to keep on going uh, over and over again 
because she genuinely loves science. She genuinely, genuinely really loves the subject matter that she is researching. And I can't help but think that it's very, very admirable of her. And I can't help but really, really like her for that kind of thing. Also, have you seen her summer alt? It's very, very cute and pretty. And gosh, I'm so glad I got her. But yeah, it, it's mainly for like her character that I uh, that I really like about her. Now, for Mim, Mim's character is very centered on love because you know, like she met the she met the prince and she fell in love with the prince. But like she has like this sort of boundary because she's dragon and he's human. Um, but what gets me for Mim is that she. <laughs> She, she has a lot to learn when it comes to love and you see bits and pieces of that throughout the story and I guess like her personal story, I don't know. I don't actually have Gala Mim, I only have Halloween Mim, so it's a little bit, so the story is a little bit different, but um, she doesn't just care about love from a romantic perspective, she cares about love in like different perspectives. Uh, this- I don't want to go too much into like spoilers, I probably maybe alluded to like story spoilers but I never really actually said too much, hopefully, I don't know. Um, but like Mim really cares about what love is, she cares about the qualities of love, like how like whether it's being like uh whether love is self-sacrificing or if it's like it's it's being courageous or brave you know like doing things for your loved ones she really cares about that kind of thing and um it's interesting to see the growth that she's she's gone through because um I th like from the beginning right before when you first meet mim as brunhilda she's very you know she's very closed off you don't see her with that affection and like you you see her past how she kind of struggles with the idea and like human emotions but because of love she she tries to like care like i guess not care she tries to understand is the better word the people around her more because they're all human they're all or like they're sylvan basically like human or sylvan but they're all people with like shorter lifespans than she does and so there's a lot of things she doesn't understand but because of love she tries to bridge that gap of understanding and yeah i feel like i'm kind of rambling about both of these characters already but i i think that that um i think that her character is very noble in a way just because of how she views the qualities of love in the story but yeah <laughs> there are other reasons why i like mim as well but i don't really want to go into that because i'm a little bit embarrassed about how blatantly obvious those qualities kind of are and it's not like I do, do it on purpose, it just ends up being that way, and I'm a little mad at myself at how it ends up that way, but you know what? Sometimes people are like that, okay? <laughs> anyway, enough of my rambles. I feel like this video's gone on long enough, but these are my top five waifus, plus some honorable mentions. <laughs> And thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you for bearing with me through this video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!